Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wa wajhika wa azimi sultanik. Allahumma iftah alayna iftuh al-arifin. Ya Allah, we ask you from the divine knowledge. Ya Arham ar-Rahimin. Ya Rabbal alameen. So, last time... Uh, we started Surah Yasin and we stopped at Ayah 28. And I'm going to briefly repeat the story of the uh, people of the village. So uh, uh, what happened, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent two, two messengers to uh, people of a village and uh, they uh, called people to re uh, religion. But the people of the village denied and belied them. So what happened, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a third one. So we have three messengers, three people who called for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now the people... Um, completed and went on denying and belying these messengers and they threatened them that we have got bad omen with you uh, uh, just because you came and uh, uh, if you don't stop then we are going to stone you and uh, we're going to, uh, going to punish you severely. So the people said uh, you, your bad luck is your uh, is uh, is what you are thinking of. It's of your imagination. We are messengers of Allah and we brought you, we are warning you against what's going to happen if you don't believe. So we knew the story of Habib al-Najjar. He came, he was a believer in these uh, uh, messengers, and he said he came running from his house. We know that his house was at the very far end of the village because he was sick. And when he heard of them, he came to them and he, he asked them, what's your sign? And they told him we can heal the sick people. So he said, okay, I'm sick and I want you to heal me. And he, and he said, they said, you have to believe in us first. And, and they showed him the signs and he believed. They made dua and Allah cured him. So he was sure that these are truthful messengers. So he came running to his people and he said, Oh, people, obey these messengers. They are truthful. And remember, those uh, uh, are calling you to believe and they are not asking you for any wages. So they are doing it for free. They are uh, really guided and they want to to guide you. And then he said to them, he told them that he has uh, believed in them and why not he doesn't believe in them? He would be uh, a fool if he doesn't follow them. And that's what happened. So when they heard that he was a believer, they just kicked him and kicked him and uh, hit him until he passed away. Even after he passed away, he wanted good for his people. So he said, I wish my people knew that what has been said to me, So he was, uh, he was said, uh, it, it was said to him, enter paradise and, and enjoy all the bounties over there. So he was good to his people after they did all what they did to him. So what happened? Now here where we stopped last time. وَمَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ مِنْ جُنْدٍ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَمَا كُنَّا مُنْزِلِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to punish these people, the people of this village. But Allah took revenge on, the, on them, but he did not send an army from the sky to destroy them. The matter was so simpler than that. إِنْ كَانَتْ إِلَّا صَيْحَةً وَاحِدَةً فَإِذَا هُمْ خَامِدُونَ It was... Uh, not but only one shout and they were 
immediately silent, dead still. Just one shout, just one cry. And it did what it did. Ya hasratan ala al-ibad. Ma yatihim min rasulin illa kanu bihi yastahzi'un. So, alas for mankind. Why don't they think? Why don't they get the message from the messengers? But in fact, whenever there is a messenger, whenever there, there came a messenger to them, but they used to mock and reject him. Why would they do that? Why they don't think that this is not acceptable? So if we, if we go back a little bit to the, to the way that this person who believed in Allah tried to convince those people. What can we say? So noting that the, the method that he used, he said, So when he said, look, you have to know that I followed these messengers. Why would I not? Am I fool, a fool not to believe in Allah? So the method that he used, he didn't tell them directly that if you don't believe in Allah, then you are foolish. No, he took it over himself. He said, if I don't follow Allah, if I don't follow these messengers, if I don't believe in Allah, then I would be fool. This is one way of calling people to Allah. Don't accuse them. Just use them. Uh, uh, use, the, use the first person to convince people. And when you want to, when you want them to think, just use the third, the uh, second person. Talk to them. Talk to them. Inni amantu bi rabbikum fasmaun. Listen understand, think. So when you want them to think, just talk to them directly. If you want them, if you want to tell them you are so-and-so without telling them that, just use it from yourself. That if I don't do that, then I will be the so-and-so. So this is a, a method to use when you call people for Allah. And you can use this uh, uh, this method, if you want to uh, uh, even to use it in your daily life, even if you wanted to say something uh, to other people around you, you can use it. this. This method is is useful. The other thing, the other lesson that we can get from this story, is that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying to Quraysh, listen, be careful. When, when Allah sent the, uh, uh, the stories, when Allah asked Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, to tell uh, his people about the stories of previous nations, there is a, a wisdom in that. Just what you need to do, oh people, just think of the results. Just think of what happened and take the lesson out of it. So benefit from those stories and save yourselves. You have to believe in Allah. You have to believe that worshiping idols will not, will not save you from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if the most merciful intends for me any harm, these, whatever they are uh, uh, worshipping, will, will not save me. So just think. So these are the two points that I wanted to comment on to, uh, to mention out of the, this story. Now, the other uh, ayah, the following ayah says, أَلَمْ يَرَوْكَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا قَبْلَهُمْ مِنَ الْقُرُونَ 
So don't, don't they see how many of the previous generations we have destroyed before them? They will not return to them. So, وَإِن كُلٌّ لَمَّا جَمِيعٌ لَدَيْنَا مُحْضَرُونَ And surely all, each and every one of people, of the human people are going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are going to be brought back before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that their actions will be scaled. So, وَإِن كُلٌّ لَمَّا جَمِيعٌ لَدَيْنَا مُحْضَرُونَ What will happen when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would get everybody before him? The records will be passed to everybody. So lucky is that person who gets his record in his right hand because he knows that he will be a winner. Because he knows that he has fulfilled his uh, uh, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted him to do in this dunya. So he saved him, himself in the akhirah. He knows that whatever he did to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the dunya is going now to be rewarded. And when they open the records, they will find every single word, every single action, every single uh, movement, every single thing that they have done in their life recorded. And we, we know that uh, in Surah Al-Kahf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا what about this record? What about this book? It doesn't leave anything small or big, light or heavy, anything except that it's recorded. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is has sent messengers to warn people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his mercy does not punish until he warns. The same thing with the mother. The mother, if, if any mom just came to her child and punished him for something that he doesn't understand what's going on, she punishes him. He says, Mama, what's going on? Why are, why, why are you doing this to me? She says, she would give a reason, but he will say, I haven't done anything. I didn't know that you want me not to do this. Out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent the messengers so that no one can say, I didn't know. No one would say that they shouldn't have done this and shouldn't have done that. وَإِن كُلٌّ لَمَّا جَمِيعٌ لَدَيْنَا مُحْضَرُونَ Everyone is going to be brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are going to be punished or rewarded. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give signs. And the signs that he is going to give them are proofs of his majesty, proofs of his power. So he starts with the first one, with the first, uh, with the first ayah, with the first sign. And he says, وَآيَةٌ لَهُمُ الْأَرْضُ الْمَيْتَةُ أَحْيَيْنَاهَا وَأَخْرَجْنَا مِنْهَا حَبًّا فَمِنْهُ يَأْكُلُونَ So this is the first sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving. So what is this sign? So it's the dead land that Allah brings life to it. And when it has life, then it would bring uh, it would give, it would produce grains for us to eat. So what is this sign? When the believers said there's no life after death, there's no resurrection, we, would, we cannot believe in that. Well, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Sayyidina Muhammad, just argue with them, just talk to their intellect and tell them, look at this land. This is a dead land. And we see that in, in uh, winter, no, the trees will have no, no leaves, no, uh, no produce, no nothing. The land is dead. And when someone would pass by, he would say, oh, a dead tree. Time will pass, spring will come, you will see uh, the, the tree would have leaves again and it will uh, reproduce again. So what happens? This is a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the dead land, he is going to, re to uh, give it life again. So people, just be alert, get prepared. You are going to be resurrected. So what will happen? So, Allah brought life again to this land, to this dead land. So it's producing grains and uh, vegetables and everything. Who is going to eat from it? People, uh, animals. So they will get the benefit out of these grains. وَجَعَلْنَا فِيهَا جَنَّاتٍ مِنْ نَخِيلٍ وَأَعْنَابٍ وَفَجَّرْنَا فِيهَا مِنَ الْعُيُونِ And we placed therein gardens of palm trees and grapes so they may eat. So they may eat. And وَفَجَّرْنَا فِيهَا مِنَ الْعُيُونِ so what happens now? There are gardens of trees and, I know, of dates and grapes. If you, if you look at the uh, palm trees, you'll find that they have a little bit like uh, spikes, so it will prevent animals from eating the dates, from climbing it and eating the dates. Now the grapes, the grapes, uh, you, you will have so many benefits out of the uh, uh, grapes. So what's the difference between the dates and the grapes? Why are they mentioned here together? If you look at the dates, at the palm tree, it's all uh, um, benefits. Even after the date is all cultivated, is all um, uh, um, uh, taken from the tree, then the, the trunk is useful, the leaves are useful, everything is useful. But the grapes, the vines, when, when you pick up the veins, the grapes, then it doesn't have the same uh, benefits as you can get from the from the dates from the palm tree so there are things that are thrown away now what happens allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying there are some some things that are so beneficial and that something that are partially beneficial same thing you know, in, in uh, this life, we have people who are friends of Allah. If you just look at them, you will get the nur, you will get the barakah, you will get, uh, uh, you will feel that there is something that has been touched in your heart. There are people whom if you look at them, they will remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are people whom if you, yani if you are with them, they will sometimes say good, sometimes they will not be, uh, they, they might say some, a little bit of a ghibah or a nimima, even if, if it's not intended. So this is the example that we have here. وَفَجَّرْنَا فِيهَا مِنَ الْعُيُونَ So what happens in this land? And we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, caused to burst forth there from these lands some springs. 
even the land that uh, that is known to be uh, uh, without water on the surface, the, uh, when you when you hear the word that this there is drought in this area, if you dig deep down, you will get water. We have caused springs of water to gush forth the rain. So that's all for the benefit of people. So why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do that? So that people would eat from whatever is going to be produced in the land because of the water. And their hands has not produced it. Yes, they prepared the land, they uh, 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 put the seeds, but who provided the water? Who watered it? Who blessed the seeds to give fruits? Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah gave the order for this land to produce something that's beneficial. So what will happen? Will they not be grateful? Look at everything around you. Everything around you, everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created around us for our benefit. Allah subjugated everything in this dunya so that we benefit from it to be able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are some uh, products that we can eat immediately from the tree. We can pick up a, uh, a cucumber, uh, an orange, an apple. We can uh, uh, eat it there immediately. And some, some, product, some uh, of the items, that are, some of the things that are produced are not eatable unless we do something to it. For example, if you take uh, an olive from the tree, you cannot eat it. It's so bitter. You have to, to do something to it so to be able to eat it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِيَأْكُلُوا مِن ثَمَرِهِ وَمَا عَمِلَتْ سُؤَيْدِيهِمْ أَفَلَا يَشْكُرُونَ سبحان الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تنبت الأرض ومن أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون. So glory be to him who has created all in pairs. Allah is exalted. Exalted is he who created everything for us in pairs, male, female. Of which the earth produces male tree female tree then we have the outcome and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says subhana alladhi khalaqal azwaj subhana so whenever we see something beautiful in this in this dunya we say subhanallah this is the first word that comes to you when you say something amazing around you in nature. A beautiful scene, clouds, uh, trees, uh, mountain, river running uh, here and there, flowers, everything. You say, subhanallah, what an amazing view. So, Glory be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created everything. He has created, perfected, and made everything beautiful for us to enjoy. So why, why would those non-believers still deny? Why would they be uh, so stubborn? Haven't they seen all these signs? They created everything. They created everything from uh, male and female. He gave uh, 
good he gave the male male uh, uh, kids he gave boys to some he gave girls to some these are all things that Allah has created and he has a wisdom in whatever he has created so even themselves women and fussy him people are created from a male and a female and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are things that he created that we don't know, we don't understand. So we just need to say, subhanallah, glory, is to be to, uh, glory be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give us another example. وَآيَةٌ لَهُمُ اللَّيْلُ نَسْلَخُ مِنْهُ النَّهَارَ فَإِذَا هُمْ مُظْلِمُونَ So this is another ayah, another sign, another wonder. So and a sign for them is the night. We withdraw there from the day. So they are in darkness. What does this mean? So the word nestlach by itself means to peel off the skin of the animal from the animal after slaughtering it. So when you peel things off, you take it bit by bit. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we peel the daylight out one layer after another until it's completely dark until it's completely night so the light goes away and the night comes so when there is no light when the light departs there is darkness now what can we understand? How can we benefit from this ayah? This is an amazing ayah. Just dig deep into the meaning of this ayah. So, imagine the heart. The heart is full of light by when when it's uh, created when a person is born he is born on the fitra on the correct path but his fathers or the environment where he lives make him either uh, uh, take him away from being a muslim to whatever religion now, what happens to the heart? The heart is all full of light. But when someone does a mistake, then there is a dot of darkness on that heart. Another dot of darkness. Another mistake means another dot of darkness. If that person is not careful about his heart, he won't mag it won't matter for him. But if he is careful about the heart, whenever he does something, he would repent. Oh Allah, Ya Allah, forgive me. He would do istighfar. He would promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to do sin, this, that sin anymore. He would, he would try his best to follow the orders of Allah. So that, that heart is not covered with darkness. When each uh, istighfar is done, then it takes off one of the layers of darkness that has been covered, uh, covering the heart. Same thing here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَآيَةٌ لَهُمُ اللَّيْلُ نَسْلَهُ مِنْهُ النَّهَارِ so we peel the daylight out one layer by another until it is complete night. 
تجري لمستقر لها and the sun runs on its appointed course its fixed course how long for a term والشمس تجري لمستقر لها as long as Allah سبحانه وتعالى wants the sun is running in its orbit ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم and that is the decree of the almighty the all knowing Allah سبحانه وتعالى he is the one who controls the sun So, Al-Bukhari radiallahu anh said, he narrated uh, that Abu Dhar said to Sayyidina Muhammad, uh, was sitting with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once, and uh, Sayyidina Muhammad asked him, Ya Abu Dhar, atadri ayna taghrubu shams? Oh Abu Dhar, do you know where the sun sets? So Abu Dhar said, Allah wa rasuluhu a'lam. And, uh, and that was interesting. He said, الشمسو تسجدو تحت العرش. So the sun prostrates beneath the throne. Everything in this dunya of Allah's creation, the angels prostrate, تسجدو لله, الشمسو تسجد, everything makes sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, how long will the sun keep going in its orbit? We, we heard, we read in Juz uh, Amma, uh, when we got the tafsir of that Juz, إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ There will be a day that, to come that the sun is folded like a ball and rolled up and thrown away, so it's dark, dark, and its lights go away. So the light of the sun goes away. And all of this is predestined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so the sun goes in its orbit, same, same thing as everything, all all the solar system, everything in the, in the sky, everything in this dunya, until one day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order it to stop. Same thing for Qamar. وَالْقَمَرَ قَدَّرْنَاهُ مَنَازِلَ حَتَّى عَادَ كَالْعُرْجُونِ الْقَدِيمِ This is another, another sign, another wonder, that in the moon we, deter, we have determined for its phase. We have decreed its stages. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just had uh, uh, caused the moon to run in a different orbit than the sun, from a different orbit than another, another uh, star. So everything has its own orbit. Until until it returns like the old dried date stock. So what's, what does the word urjun mean? If, if you take the part of the palm tree that when you look at it, you see the dates are uh, stuck on it, this part is called Urjun. So this is the date stock. And Allah has decreed that the moon, that the moon pass through different phases until it becomes, it is like the dried, the uh, old yellowish, uh, uh, date stock. So at the beginning of the month, the moon appears small when it rises. Okay? So when it rises, it gives little light. And the second night, it gets bigger and rises to a higher position 
giving more light and so on until it becomes full on the 14th night of the month and we're talking about the lunar month here so after that it starts to wane until the end of the month until it appears as an old dried curved date stock so this is the cycle of the moon um, I'm gonna give you the names of this the uh, stages of the of the moon according to days so each set of three nights of the moon has a name the first three nights are called al ghurar the second three nights are called nufal the third three uh, three nights are called tusa the fourth three nights are called ushar the fifth three nights are called al bid the sixth three nights are called al dura the seventh three nights are called a zulam the eighth three nights are called al hanadis the ninth three nights are are called al daadi or al daadi the tenth three nights are called al mihaq and this is when a new moon is born so which word which word just got your attention you need to know one of these i'm going to repeat just the names al ghurar nufal tusa ushar al bid al dura al zulam al hanadis al daadi al mihaq Yes, you're right, al -biyad. So what are the, the, the nights uh, that are called al -biyad? These are the 13th, 14th, and 15th, and these are the ones that are recommended to, to uh, so you fast them. Okay, so these are the, uh, the stages of the moon, the cycle of the moon. Now, we move to the next uh, ayah. It's not allowable for the sun to catch up or to reach the moon. Nor does the night overtake the day. But each, the, the sun and the, and the, the moon, each in an orbit is swimming is moving okay now imagine the sun is moving in its orbit in its own orbit uh, the earth is moving around the sun and the moon is moving around the earth Think about this majestic image. Who's controlling this? How come that none, none, nothing goes wrong? How come that none crashes into one another? How come that each star is in its orbit? How come that each planet is, is going around something? Who is controlling this? It's Allah, Al-Aziz, Al-Alim. Al-Aziz, he is the one who knows what's going on. Allah is the Almighty who controls everything he has created. And he is the all-knowing, he is Al-Alim. He created and he has a reason why he created. He proportioned and he knows how he is proportioning it. He, he did and he knows what is 
what is uh, done? Who is sharing that with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? No one. He is the only one who controls everything. He is the only one who has the authority, who has the word to control everything. On the day of judgment, when, everyone, when everything dies, when, everything, when everyone dies, no one is there. Allah will ask, لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ Who is the owner of everything today? He will say, لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَارِ It's for Allah, the one. Allah, who, who decides, and there is no one who can question him. There is no one who can ask him why you did this, why you didn't do that. So the lesson is we have to accept whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us. We have to accept everything that was proportioned in our life. And accepting means the heart is content. Sometimes people will say, okay, I didn't have this. Uh, I have uh, boys, I don't have girls. Okay, I will be patient. Sometimes people will say, oh, I'm, uh, I got married. I, I, uh, I didn't have any children. Okay, I will be patient. This is okay, but there is something that is higher than being patient. It's acceptance. It's a rida. When you have rida in your heart, then this means that you have accepted truly what Allah has given you. Okay, this is what Allah wants. Okay, khair. That's the best for me. Allah knows what's the best for me and he has given it to me. If I'm making dua and Allah is not accepting, well, it doesn't mean he is not accepting. It means he is either uh, uh, saving you from some, something harmful that might have been ha happened to you, or he is saving these dua to the akhirah, or what's more important, Allah says to the angel, if someone makes a dua and he doesn't like that person, give him whatever he wants, I don't want to listen to him. I don't want to listen to his voice. But if someone is loved by Allah, Allah would say to the angel, delay giving him what he wants. He, let him keep asking me. I love to hear his voice. So we accept whatever Allah wants. We make dua, of course. Ud'uni astajib lakum. This is what Allah says. Call me for prayer. Ask me and I will give you. But when he gives us, that's a different issue. He might give us in this dunya or he might save it to the akhirah. And by saving it to the akhirah, the benefit would be much higher than getting it in the dunya. So we have to understand we have, when we read the Qur'an, when we understand the ayahs, we have to think, we have to apply it on our life, on ourselves. It's not just a story of previous nations. There is a message in this story. We have to understand this message. So, لَلشَّمْسُ يَنْبَغِي لَهَا أَنْ تُدْرِكَ الْقَمَرِ وَلَا اللَّيْلُ سَابِقُ النَّهَارِ وَكُلُّمْ فِي فَلَكٍ يَسْبَحُونَ Allah controls everything and Allah is the only one who is able to bring us back and who is going to bring us back to him. So we have to prepare ourselves for that. We have to get ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to know that as much good as we do in this dunya, then it's for our benefit in the akhirah. But we also have to remember that no one gets into, into, into Jannah by his actions. Okay, 
how come so what what's the use now doing good but we are not going to be to get to get into general with our deeds no there is something very important we have to understand when when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لَنْ يَدْخُلَ الْجَنَّةَ أَحَدٌ بِعَمَلِهِ No one is going to enter paradise by his uh, action. They asked him, Ya Rasulullah, even you? He said, even me. وَلَا أَنَا حَتَّى يَتَغَمَّدَنِي اللَّهُ بِرَحْمَتِهِ Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy on, on me. So we get into Jannah by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But our deeds will be the, the place for us on the levels of Jannah. So how close we want to be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we do our best in this dunya. We wake up at night to pray two rak'ahs, to be just with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We read the Quran just to, to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are reading his book. We send salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so to be closer to him in the akhirah. And I'm going to give you a shortcut that يُحْشَرُ الْمَرْءُ مَعَ مَنْ أَحَبَّ that's a narration by Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A person will be resurrected with the one whom he loves. So, Ya Allah, we, we, want, you to, to, we, we want you to know that we love you. We love Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who says that a person will be resurrected, resurrected with the one whom he loves. We love him so to be resurrected with him. Send him lots of salawat so you will be with him, insha'Allah, in Al Firdaus Al A'la. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad. We're going to stop here today, insha'Allah, and next week we will go on with the tafsir of Surah Yasin, insha'Allah. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu kama yinbaghi li jalali wa jika wa azimi sultanik. Allahumma inna nas'aluka min khayri ma sa'alaka minhu Sayyiduna wa nabiyuna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa na'udhu bika min sharri ma sta'adaka minhu Sayyiduna wa nabiyuna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma inna nas'aluka min al-khayri kullihi ajilihi wa ajilihi ma alimna minhu wa ma lam na'alam. Wa na'udhu bika min al-sharri kullihi عاجله وآجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم وصل اللهم وسلم على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته